Hi, Coach Chuck here of the National Free Flight Society, and I want to welcome you to uh, STEM Week at the Science Olympiad Nationals for 2021. I want to talk to you today about flying beyond Science Olympiad. Many of you have had the opportunity to uh, participate in flying events with Science Olympiad at, at one level or another. And uh, if you've caught the bug, you may want to continue to fly or look at career opportunities uh, around your flying experience. The National Free Flight Society, or NIFIS, uh, sponsors the Science Olympiad flying events. And we also have a youth development program to try and put together resources to help you get started in aero modeling, either as a hobby or in support of uh, Right Stuff, ELG, and uh, helicopter flying with Science Olympiad. There are many opportunities for indoor duration modeling and competition. The Academy of Model Aeronautics uh, sponsors competitions around the country. Most of them are co-sponsored with NIFIS. And most are simple one-day local competitions and they're very casual events and you can receive a lot of help. Those tend to be in high school gyms, church gyms, and that kind of thing. Some are all weekend long and might be in a nicer facility such as the uh, Eager Arizona uh, uh, indoor football dome uh, with a, a nearly 100 foot ceiling. Um, you can look at freeflight.org for contest listings. The Academy of Model Aeronautics, as well as NIFIS, sponsors an annual large competition called Nationals. Uh, during this competition, NIFIS is now sponsoring a Science Olympiad seminar, as well as Science Olympiad flying. So this is an opportunity to fly your ELG or Right Stuff planes in a uh, different environment. This year we'll be at the Pontiac um, Soccer Complex and uh, the event will run from July 20th through July 23rd. On July 21st, we'll have a Science Olympiad seminar. Um, this will be a, a hands-on uh, seminar hosted by myself and Coach Brian. And that will run from seven to nine in the morning. And we'll follow that with uh, opportunities to fly your ELG planes, as well as your right stuff planes. During the flying session, we'll have help from myself, uh, Coach Brian, and other uh, NIFIS experts. Uh, and they'll be able to, to help you perfect your flying. Now let's take a look at some of the uh, stepping stones into competitive uh, model aviation. The first class I'd like to discuss is P-18. This is a entry level class. Uh, this is uh, most similar to the Science Olympiad plane in that it's uh, about an 18 inch wingspan and weighs uh, seven and a half grams. So very similar to what you're used to building already. And one limitation here is the propeller. It has to be commercially available plastic prop, maximum diameter of six inches. Um, fairly simple to build. There's a number of kits out there, but if you're used to building a Science Olympiad plane, uh, you can build your own design fairly easily uh, with, with standard hobby shop balsa. The covering on this one is a grocery store um, uh, veggie bag covering. NIFIS is going to have a build along uh, Zoom session on June 13. Watch for that on freeflight.org, join learn fly slash science Olympiad, um, and, and look for it there. We'll be building this particular plane, which is a first derivative kit from laser cut planes. You can find that easily online. This plane will do uh, one to three minutes, depending on what rover you choose. Uh, in a standard uh, uh, high school or mid school gym. So uh, not a long duration, but very similar to uh, Science Olympiad planes. Next up we have a limited penny plane. Uh, penny because the minimum weight of this plane is 3.1 grams, so uh, less than half the weight of a Science Olympiad plane. But what you'll find is that the construction techniques are very similar to 
uh, the Science Olympia planes. In this case, we're, we're building a, a Bill Gowan carbon penny, and the leading and trailing edges are uh, carbon strips, uh, very similar to some of the kits available for your uh, right stuff planes. Um, but all of the wood on here is a little bit more critical than a Science Olympiad plane in order to get down to the 3.1 grams. You need to look at what we call contest grade balsa. In this case, anywhere from 5 to 7 pound per cubic foot wood is necessary. Uh, the propeller is simple sheet uh, wood, um, but the propeller uh, building is a new skill you'll need to learn. Other than that, most of the building and assembly is very similar to uh, a Science Olympiad Wright Stuff plane. These planes will typically fly about six minutes in a Category 1 gym that's uh, uh, ceiling up to about 25, 26 feet, most high school and med school gyms. Um, higher facilities like the Eager Arizona facility, uh, we had flights over 10 to 11 minutes. Um, so uh, it, it, it will fly quite a bit longer than a um, right stuff plane. This is an excellent class to start learning uh, about the propeller, especially the flaring propeller, and how to optimize your propeller and rubber combination for your best duration. And especially as you go into different facility sizes, you'll find you have to change the uh, rubber and prop balance. It's a fun category. Uh, my kids love to fly this. Uh, most of our uh, flying sessions, they'll spend their time with these. Uh, it's a relaxing class, uh, not, a, not a whole lot technical to it. Um, and it's, it's fairly simple to build for those with Science Olympiad experience. So. Finally, we'll take a brief look at F1D. This is the pinnacle of indoor flying, and this is the plane that international competition centers on. This is a much larger plane, being 55 centimeters uh, wingspan. Uh, and uh, it's a lighter plane. It's only 1.4 grams uh, ready to fly without rubber. The wing cord is 200 millimeters and the stab span is limited to 450 millimeters. This uh, plane was built by one of my students who is now part of the U.S. Junior Team and it requires a number of new build skills compared to Science Olympiad. The first being a rolled motor stick and tail boom. These are only 13 thousandths thick on the motor stick and 9 thousandths of an inch thick on the tail boom. Balsa wood that's rolled up on a form and then glued into a tube. Uh, second big step is a boron fiber. All of the spars as well as the motor stick and tail boom on this are reinforced with three thousandths of an inch diameter boron fiber and that's a, a learning process. And then on some versions of this plane, especially for lower ceiling, we use a variable pitch prop mechanism. This one has a fixed pitch prop because it was used to qualify for the team uh, at Lakehurst with 180 foot ceiling and it'll be used in the salt mines in Romania with a ceiling over 200 feet. So no need for a variable pitch on that. The uh, prop is a build up structure uh, and all of your surfaces are very fine uh, wood. The covering is even lighter than super ultra film. We use a film called OS film. Um, and so handling becomes a major issue here. You gotta learn where not to squeeze a plane and so forth. But this is fully within the building capability of somebody who's built uh, right stuff and then limited penny planes. There are new skills to build, but there's a lot of resources online. Uh, there's a website called the F1D blog. Uh, put together by uh, Kang Lee, who is a two-time world champion and current record holder. Uh, and um, uh, he's got some very good starting points as well as designs on that website. A very detailed build manual. That's where we learn to build these uh, as a team. These are capable of flights over 20 minutes in any height uh, facility. 
uh, using the variable pitch prop in lower facilities. Um, steering therefore becomes mandatory. Uh, in 20 minutes or, or longer, the plane's going to drift from one room of the one end of the room to the other, uh, and you're going to have to steer it either with a, a pole or in taller facilities a helium balloon. But this is the opportunity for you to uh, represent the United States on the uh, junior team and compete internationally. The junior team is up to 18 years old, so it's a limited window. But there aren't that many uh, youth uh, trying it out, and we'd love to recruit new youth uh, from the uh, Science Olympiad uh, competitions to try out F1D flying for international competition. Top competitors in F1D have also come from Science Olympiad. One of the best known right now is Brett Sanborn. He's the current world champion and he got his start in Science Olympiad before 2010. He then progressed to uh, flying F1D uh, for the U.S. junior team and now it's a lifelong passion. He's uh, continually setting new uh, world and national records as well as he's the current uh, world champion. Uh, so if you're interested in this, please get a hold of us and, and we'll help point you in the right direction, help you understand what tools and skills you need to put one of these together. Now I've just introduced a, a handful of the indoor duration classes, but this is a small fraction of what's uh, typically offered at a, uh, a local contest. Um, there's a, a multiple multitude of classes depending what you want to pursue. Uh, so, some of these are, are based on weight and size limits and are still duration classes like those we've covered so far. Uh, there's also some very different uh, flight categories, including helicopter. We're familiar with that from Science Olympiad. And ornithopter, which is uh, driven rather than a propeller, it's driven by flapping of wings. That's a very technical, interesting class. There's several classes uh, for gliders. We mentioned the uh, catapult launch gliders, but they also have a hand launch glider category, a tow launch glider category, and F1N is a very uh, popular international class with a uh, tip launch glider that's thrown discus style. Uh, there's a large number of scale categories. Uh, if you're into building replicas of real airplanes, anything from very simplified uh, profile fuselage planes to very complex scale airplanes. And then there's special categories, including nostalgia and World War II. We also have a number of outdoor uh, events and the outdoor uh, free flight events are as uh, varied as the indoor, including gliders, uh, rubber power, and then since we're outdoor, uh, gas and glow powered. Uh, and then there's uh, very modern classes with uh, carbon fiber and many composites involved, as well as nostalgia classes, which are limited to older designs using older build techniques. So there's a wide range of uh, available uh, events in outdoor. And uh, you can visit us at the outdoor NATS about two weeks after the indoor NATS in Muncie, Indiana. As far as uh, careers in aerospace and aero modeling, um, the degrees you might want to consider uh, generally will center on mechanical or aerospace engineering. Um, but with that said, uh, mechanical engineering is a very wide field and looking at the uh, uh, trajectory of careers in aerospace right now, uh, there's a lot in the area of, of unmanned vehicles. So uh, if you pursue mechanical or aerospace engineering, you might wanna consider building a strength in electronics, controls, uh, software development, robotics, and sensors to augment your basic uh, mechanical or aerospace engineering. The careers uh, might be at aircraft corporations uh, designing and building uh, new aircraft. Uh, there's a new space race. If you're not familiar, it's, it's booming right now. And the uh, space race will include a lot of uh, aeronautical engineering as well. 
Uh, the other huge area right now is unmanned uh, craft for delivery, for power line inspection, uh, for many uh, opportunities, aerial photography. And in this area, automation skills will be key. So again, the, the electronics, controls, robotics uh, type of experience combined with an aeronautical education would be critical. So through this presentation, we can see that aero modeling can be a lifelong, lifelong hobby uh, or even can uh, lead to directions in your career path. You can start now uh, by competing locally in AMA and NIFAS contests outside of Science Olympiad and beginning to build toward the U.S. junior team for those so inclined. This is a, a huge step up in building skills, but there's help available, including through myself, uh, to mentor you through the process and, and build for the junior team. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation and there will be uh, an, an offline means of asking and uh, responding to uh, questions. So I thank you for your time and good luck at Nationals this weekend.